Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we are back with my monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, we're going to take a look at Plex hardware transcoding, and we're doing this as a standalone video. I talk about it all the time, but I thought it might be helpful to have something I can point people at uh, when this topic comes up in the future. And what prompted me to make this video is that a lot of you were excited about the new Raspberry Pi 4, and were wondering how it might do as a Plex server. And the answer to that question is it really depends on what you plan to do with the media on that server. If you are watching it inside your home, it may do okay. But if you are trying to watch stuff on your mobile phone when you're not at home or maybe share your Plex server with other people, it's probably not going to be a good solution because it doesn't support hardware transcoding. So in this video, I'm going to show you what hardware transcoding can do for you, the differences between having it on and off, and also what kind of low-cost devices out there support hardware transcoding that can deliver a lot of powerful media serving capabilities in relatively inexpensive hardware. Lots of stuff to take a look at here, which we're gonna get to in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex, However, they are not reviewing or approving this content before it is uploaded, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this transcoding thing is all about. So let's start at the top level here and talk about what transcoding actually means. This is one of the key features of Plex, and what it can do is take a large movie file, like the one I have here in this example that's running at 20 to 40 megabits per second, and Plex can squeeze that movie down as I play it into something a lot smaller. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, in my particular circumstances here, I only have 12 megabits per second of upstream bandwidth to Comcast, and that means it would be impossible for me to watch this movie when I'm not at home with my Plex server because I don't have enough upstream bandwidth to accommodate what this movie was encoded at. So what Plex will do is transcode that movie into something smaller, that I can transmit upstream and that I can watch on my phone. Now this is a very CPU intensive activity and that means if you don't have hardware transcoding on your device enabled, it might only be able to do one of these uh, compressions at a time. But as you'll see in a few minutes when we activate it, even low end hardware like this can do two or three or more of these streams at the same time just by taking advantage of some hardware that's built into these Intel processors. Now the challenge is, is that this is only supported on specific Intel processors that make use of their QuickSync technology. This means it does not work on other chips like ARM-based processors you might find on your Raspberry Pi or your low-end NAS device. Intel does maintain a list of compatibility on their website, and I'll put a link down below in the video description that you can click on and be brought right to the page with the correct filters. And there is a lot of support for QuickSync. In fact, this goes back many, many years. Uh, so you can scroll through this list. You may have to click the show more uh, to find the processors that you might be looking at. But there's a good chance that there is a dirt cheap computer sitting in a dumpster somewhere or maybe on eBay uh, that will support this technology and will be able to get you a hardware transcoding Plex server. Uh, one thing to note though is that this hardware transcoding feature requires a Plex pass so you do have to have that premium feature enabled in order to take advantage of this technology. And now what I wanna do is show you exactly what it does and how much performance gains it can deliver. So let's begin with a Blu-ray movie I've got running here on my iPhone. This computer here is serving it up to the phone. Now because I'm on my local network, I can play back the film at its original bit rate on the phone, which is about 40 megabits per second. And as you can see here, it's not stressing the CPU out at all because we are not doing any kind of transcoding. But remember, uh, my upstream bandwidth here is only 12 megabits per second, so I couldn't watch this film out of the home if I don't do some kind of transcoding to it first. So what I'm gonna do now is just jump over to the phone here and select a lower bit rate for this film that will force the Plex server here to start doing some transcoding. Uh, so what I think I'll do is maybe make it a 720p movie at three megabits per second now. And now that I have that set, it'll reset and we'll start transcoding the movie. And watch what happens now to the CPU usage. It goes way up here because we are not using hardware transcoding. And this is why if you are using something that doesn't support hardware transcoding, why it's so unreliable and why it starts getting all laggy and, and jumpy because it really stresses out whatever processor you are using uh, to do that transcoding in real time. So right now, all four cores are dedicating themselves to getting this movie to play back 
uh, in real time here at 720p at 4 megabits per second. It's working, but I can guarantee you if I brought another stream into this mix here, it would start to not work, and that's because this CPU just can't do anything else at the moment. But if we were to enable hardware transcoding, we'd see a huge difference. So let's do that right now. Now to enable hardware transcoding, you go over to settings on your Plex web interface, and what you want to do is scroll down to the transcoder. Now this is often hidden when you first arrive at that page. So what you want to do is go to show advanced. And what you're going to see here is an option for hardware acceleration when available. And what you want to do is click on that and click on save changes. And remember, you do need to have a Plex Pass for this feature to work. And after you enable it, it's not automatic. You've got to reboot your Plex server to be able to get this feature to get going. And that's what I'm going to do right now. And then we'll go back and play this movie again and see what that does to our system resources. All right, so we're playing back the movie here at 720p at 4 megabits per second. And as you can see here in our CPU utilization chart, uh, we are pretty much using the same amount of CPU that we were when we had no transcoding going on at all. This QuickSync technology makes a huge, huge difference in performance. And this really means the difference between having one person stream from your device versus multiple. And we'll try a few more streams out in a minute or two here. Now, how you can monitor this is on your Plex web interface. If you go up to the Activity button here and select the server that you are monitoring, uh, you'll get a look at what is going on here. Uh, I'm going to hide the details here because this is what you'll typically see when you load up the dashboard. But if we click and expand this, you can see that uh, we are transmitting at 4 megabits per second, and we are transcoding the video from 1080p to 720p. And you'll notice up here there's a little HW, and that means that Plex is taking advantage of the hardware transcoding. That's how you know it's working. Of course, you'll know it's working by looking at your CPU utilization chart here, uh, but you'll get confirmation of that uh, just by looking here in the control panel and seeing that the HW is enabled. All right, let's add a few more streams to the mix now. I've got my iPad out, and what we're going to do here is play back a different part of that same film at 4 megabits per second, 720p as before. And we'll see that start to spin up here on the control panel. And that is now transcoding in hardware. And I've got now uh, both devices here playing back. And if we switch back over to our CPU monitor, uh, we'll see some additional usage here, of course, because we are now doing two streams at the same time. But remember, before, we would never be able to get both of these things working simultaneously. And again, we're still in just maybe the 40 to 50% territory on CPU as both of these things go on here. So not bad on that front. Uh, now what I'm going to do is play a different video file from my computer here. So I've got The Expanse, one of my favorite TV shows going here. Uh, we're going to play that off of the computer. I'm going to go ahead here and just uh, convert this down to uh, that same 720. Actually, this one I'll do 480p at 1.5 megabits per second just to throw another uh, different stream into the mix here. That'll take a second to spin up, and if we jump back to our CPU monitor, uh, you'll see that's increasing a little bit there, but uh, we are still well within the bounds of what this computer can deliver for multiple users. And again, we can confirm that that hardware transcoding is going on here uh, just by checking out the uh, control panel. So altogether, a much, much better level of performance that we're seeing here out of hardware transcoding versus not using it. So the bottom line here is that if you are looking to stream things outside of your home and you don't want to spend all that much on the server, I would look at some kind of low-end Intel-based mini PC running with their latest Gemini Lake architecture. Uh, the computer we've been playing with today is from Pepper Jobs. This has an N4100 quad-core processor, and I think this chip might be the sweet spot for uh, your own hardware transcoding solution. And you can usually get PCs like this for around $200 or less, depending on where you look. They're all over the place. There's some really good ones out there. Uh, the Pepper Jobs one here costs a little bit more because they have tuned it for performance. And it really does a nice job of uh, delivering very consistent performance. And I'll put a link down below to the review that I did of that particular computer. Now, if you are just streaming inside of your home and never want to go outside of the house with it, uh, then something like the Raspberry Pi 4 might work. We'll test it when I finally get one in to try out, and we'll see exactly how well it does. But as you saw in our original demo here, 
uh, when there's no transcoding to be done, it often isn't as much of a, a heavy load on the processor, and that's where some of these lower end devices will do fine with Plex. So you can get all that uh, great interface and organizational capabilities that Plex delivers, uh, but you won't have the hardware transcoding for doing anything more than just watching the original version of the media. And again, we'll test that on the Raspberry Pi 4 when it comes in. But overall, uh, you can see exactly what hardware transcoding can do for you. It is a significant uh, increase in performance and simultaneous streams that you can support. And I've been using it, of course, for many years now on my network attached storage device over there in the closet. If you have questions, let me know down in the comment section below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin, and I want to thank Plex for their continued support of the channel. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.